Welcome to Oversharing with the Overbees. I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And each week you can tune in to hear us respond to your voicemails, go in depth on our lives as content creators, and hopefully leave you feeling even better than we found you. With that being said, let's get to Oversharing. Matt uh, added a sticker for me <laughs> to my mic. I just found it on the table. It's cute. I gave you a little customization. Yeah. So You want to tell everybody what it says or no? <laughs> or are you just going to leave it at that? Uh, you got it from... Uh, a person who writes your books, right? My books? Your, no, I mean, just not like, your books, uh, but writes books. It was sent to me in a book package. Yeah. Yeah. So your hockey books, right? Yeah, I read... Which learned everything you know about hockey? That's not true. <laughs> I, You know, something I don't like is what? like Matt really latches on to things that I'm insecure about and really unintentionally oh, okay. uh, rides at home. I was going to say, I wasn't aware of your insecurity about hockey knowledge. I, <laughs> that's not what it is. <laughs> Okay, now I don't even like where this conversation oh, is going. That's a good start. It only took, uh, what, 15 <laughs> seconds into the podcast? No, no, no. It's just like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't like it when people make fun of me. <laughs> just as Weird. a whole. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good sports romance book. I yep. really do. And Matt really thinks that's funny. I don't, it's fine. I, I don't know. It makes about perfect to sense it. to me because it feels a lot more ethical than like a billionaire romance book. Um, yeah. You know? But and like usually the, of age. The like problem with romance age. books as a whole is like you kind of have to take all normal problems off the table for it to be real romanticized. Well, yeah. And so everybody has to have fat salaries. And there's only so many ways to explain that, you know? I'm sure it makes writing the book a little simpler if you're like, well, okay, they they don't have like regular obstacles right. in life. Exactly. 75% of the book is not dedicated to them going to work. Right. So that's Anyway, nice. the sticker says puck slut. <clears throat> yeah. It came in my package. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I couldn't give that one to Gardner. So... <laughs> uh, Yeah. Uh, I really do like her books. Um, Becca Mack is the author, and it's the Playing for Keep series. Yeah, you've been a big fan. Yeah. But the stickers. I really like her. Like, she's wonderful. The author is just, she's very empowering and enlightening, and I like her as a person. I think she hits a lot of really real topics while also like her reads being really enjoyable. But I reread them because JC decided to read them, my best friend. And I read them, so I read the first book of the series uh, because my sister wanted me to read it, and I really enjoyed them. And what stuck with me was the storyline. Like, Mm -hmm. the it's very found family. The the characters are hysterical. They make me laugh out loud when I'm reading the books. And by the third book, like, you know the entire friend group really well, and it's just they're fun reads. And when I went back to reread them a year later with JC, I had no idea they were as uh, smutty as they are. Yeah. <clears throat> Which, like, I don't care. Like, that's great with me. Whatever. Like, yeah. but I was like, oh, I need to be careful about... Because, like, when I was recommending it, I was thinking of the storyline, you know? Yeah, and, you like, enjoyed the characters. I really enjoyed the, the way that she developed the characters. I, I think that they're funny and fun and light and while also hitting some real topics and... Uh, but I, they're long books and they are, they are not short on the, on the spice. So. Oh, good stuff. Whoops. Good stuff. Who knows who I've recommended those to not thinking about that. Yeah. I de- you definitely have. I, my problem. That was one of your go-to recommendations for a while. My problem is I do not, like, I don't notice. Yeah. It doesn't stick with you. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, like, and the thing is I can read a book and people are like, was it smutty or not? And I'm like, I don't know. Unless it had something like really, really? wild. Yeah. Most of the time I'm like, I am not sure. <laughs> by, by the time, not immediately done reading yeah. it, but like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if somebody's like, oh, you've read this and like it was a while ago. Well, like the sex is not what sticks with me at all. No. If, if the, if the smutty parts are the parts that are sticking with me, it probably wasn't that good of a read. Fair. Is my thought. Fair. You're, so, a, you're a characters and conversations person. A hundred percent. That's always what stands out to you. One hundred percent. In my secondhand experience. But it's funny because like I read uh, a ink, uh, Fate Inked in Blood, I think is what it's called. And it's like a newer fantasy book that just came out. And I read that last month and 
somebody had told me they're like, oh, it is so like there's so much sex in it. And I was like, okay. So I like mentally prepared myself. I'm like, okay, smutty book, got it. And I was like 70% in <laughs> and nothing had happened. I was like, I think we're reading different books. Yeah. Was it backloaded? No, not at all. No? Okay. There was one scene, the entire book, Must which was really fine. Stood out. That's not why I picked it out. Do you know what I mean? And so it wasn't <laughs> yeah. a big deal, but I texted the, it was a friend's mom who had said that. Ah. And so I texted the friend. I was like, wrong wrong it's not loaded up with i mean it was a romance and she texted me back she's like i don't think my mom's ever read a romance book before got though. it got it what have you been doing for the last week and a half you've for been the, like kind of busy right <laughs> yeah we've had a honestly the last three weeks yeah have been bananas and really good though yeah lots of like, fun stuff really good bananas like i have not felt too stressed or overwhelmed about all of it. So I was in California. I took my longest trip ever away from the kids. Uh, My friend Anna launched her first swimwear collection with PacSun. And we had so much fun, truly. Like we had the best week. Anna was, I mean, abundantly kind to all of us and really spoiled everybody that went out there. Yeah, Uh, And we just had a really good time together. It was a fun very, uh, it, I mean, it was all about having a good time, truly. Mm-hmm. And so that was great. And then uh, my flight landed. Matt picked me up at the airport and we drove back and his cousins arrived within 15 to 20 seconds of us pulling into the driveway. They beat us home. Yeah. They just pulled into the driveway and we followed them in. Yep. And so uh, then we were with them for the solar eclipse, which oh, was yeah. really cool. And... Today is our first day of not traveling or having people in our home and in what, three weeks? And I guess so, yeah. Has I'm, it been that long? It's been that long. I am a really tired girl. Yeah. Like a very tired girl. I have gotten very little sleep the last week and a half. So if I say something crazy, it's that. That's the fault. Should we rebrand this podcast under sleeping with the overbees? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds... Yeah, I mean, why not? Okay. It just feels like I'm brand for us right now. You feel like we're talking about our sleep too much? Somehow. Somehow every week it happens. Although this one, you've just... You've been really going. But otherwise, our kid typically just sabotages us the day before recording day. I don't feel like I've been this... No, I don't know. Maybe you've been really going. I feel like, like this it's is not been... a one night of like poor sleep. This is a week and a half, two weeks of under sleeping. Yeah, just a. While I was in California, I did not sleep enough. Period. No. Yeah, which was my fault. My fault only, but it was worth it. I, mean, yeah. I really, I had a fantastic time. I got to meet some really incredible women, and I got to meet some women that I have followed online for a long time, and that part was really cool. Um, it was just, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. How was the eclipse? But what'd you think of the eclipse? You said it was cool, but. See, we've already, like I did the eclipse last time mm. when it came. It, it was really cool both yeah. times. I mean, it is, it's wild. Yeah. We were, we didn't quite get totality at our place. We were about an hour north of where it was totally eclipsed. Mm-hmm. So did you see total eclipse last time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, I, we could have traveled, but we didn't. No, the, tr- the amount of traffic that was out, we, uh, even well, my family that traveled here who had planned to drive like another hour or two further, the day or two before they looked at like the state of emergency that our state declared and all kinds of stuff about like, Hey, there's going to be like 2 million extra cars on the road. Uh, so watch out. And they're like, I think 99.2% is pretty good. Well, part of it was that Arkansas was like the peak for totality. Yeah. Like it, so about an hour and a half south of us was the peak totality of like four minutes and 25 seconds of like totality. Like whole path. Yeah. Gotcha. And so like NASA was in Russellville, like everyone oh, was in Arkansas for gotcha. it. And uh, it was... a big deal. And Arkansas is obviously not used to traffic like that. No, no. For anything. We don't, uh, ever. Yeah, we don't usually bring in that many people. There's only a couple million people in the state altogether. Did you see the Airbnb map 
No. And that was crazy to look at is like the map of what Airbnbs are typically booked and you like see the little dots and stuff. It was mm-hmm. like the whole country. Uh, and then it showed what was booked for the eclipse and there's just a strip of like, it's oh, lit up in the path yeah. of the eclipse. Right down the line. Yeah. That's cool. A lot of people said they booked their Airbnbs early and then they got their uh, reservations dumped because the people like dumped what reservations oh. they had and then put it back up more expensive because they didn't know. I'm like, oh, I'm that's sure. crummy. Yeah. That's kind of lame. But so, anyway. Yeah. What'd you think? I thought it was cool. I, I, again, I also experienced the 2017 one and got to see the whole total eclipse. So that was cool. Um, so I'd seen it before, but it was, it was fun to have our kids and well, only one of our kids even kind of looked at it. And our I got to say. kid was napping. Yeah. He did. He slept through it. And I don't think he was going to... I didn't want him to be out there because no. I had a fear that he was going to stare at the sun. <laughs> that really stressed me out with both of our kids. Yeah, you were you were on high alert for uh, cornea burns. I, like, how bad would that be that you as a kid, like, that I don't know. You were blind at, like, two? Yeah. Partially or have, like, blind permanent vision problems yeah. because I know it's not likely, but still. Yeah. I mean, the president did it a while ago. Yeah. And I think he can still see. Maybe. But <laughs> just going out, can't actually see how funny would that be? Just missing like the middle of the vision. Mm. But um, yeah, it was really the biggest task was making sure that she kept putting her glasses on. Not that she was trying to look at the sun either, but you just, it, especially when everybody was like ooing and aahing over it. I was like, hey, glass, gl- glasses, hey, hey, nope, you got, you got to keep them on. She kept wanting to put them on her knee. Yeah. And I was like, your knee is fine. Your knee's not going to go blind. <laughs> your knee is sunproof. Your knee actually is already blind. Uh, <laughs> there's no vision from your knee. So, but she played pickleball yesterday. That was the more fun thing. I don't think she's going to remember the eclipse. She might remember pickleball. Yeah. That's but, fair. Yeah. What's fun is what the next one's in 20 years. Is that what it, 2040? Something, something like right? that. So the, our kids will be like a fun age to do it next time because they'll be grown yeah they can travel back home for it maybe right we'll see or no maybe are we not. just assuming they're gonna live far away from us i don't know i mean that's probably a fair assumption <laughs> i'd want to get away from me too i think it's better to assume that than to be surprised by it yeah you're right you're right uh okay what else is going on do you have a word of the week for me word of the week word of the week word of the week let's look Are you familiar with the word tenuous? Is it similar to tedious? Um, it has most of the same letters. But no tenuous. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. No. Tenuous means lacking substance or significance, affording no ease or reassurance, very thin in gauge or diameter. I have not here to use that, but... Uh, Tenuous. Having a thin consistency. So like shaky. Okay. Like you have a tenuous grasp on spelling. What would it mean if I say I feel tenuous? It wouldn't? Mm. It wouldn't mean anything? It feel, you feel like you're lacking substance or significance? I don't know. I've okay. never heard it used that way, but I think it <laughs> technically works. Okay. Tenuous. I like that. Yeah. Somebody DM'd me and said that they got to use, uh, oh, shoot. Um, One of our words. Yeah. Dang it. (laughs) I can't remember. I hate words. Yeah. Again, a tenuous grasp on the English language. It's so bad. You do your best. I'm horrible. You work hard at it. I don't understand why nothing sticks. For words? I've been having more and more experiences, though, in the last year where I'm like, I really think I'm dyslexic. You might be. Like, I I genuinely do. Like, I, I don't know, a lot of things. Yeah. 
Anyway. You're going to be okay? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be okay. All right. Well. I'm sad about me not seeing letters correctly. That's okay. You'll, uh, well, I don't know that that'll ever change, but. Yeah. We'll Bad dad, it. mean mom. Mean mom is mean mom left for five nights. Yeah, mean mom was gone last week. <laughs> yeah. That's really. Bad dad. Um, there was a day where we mostly ate cereal. That might not have been dad's like finest. I would prefer not to know that for sure. Finest dadding. Mm-hmm. Um, it was re- by request, but still, you know, could have, could have done a better job there for sure. But everybody made it. Everybody was happy with the food, even if, you know, nutritionally it wasn't the most uh, diverse. Did you have cereal as well? Uh, no, but... Now um, that's messed up. <laughs> you made yourself three whole nutritious meals and you fed them cereal? No, I made myself two meals that that's were medium nutrition at best. sure bad dad. Yeah. Bad no. dad trophy. <laughs> okay. You're acting like I uh, prepared a full... No. Matt, he told me he prepared himself a four-course meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then only offered the kids cereal. I, that's exact. That's what you told me. Yeah, it was a it was a full day with twelve <laughs> courses that I prepared for yeah. myself. But uh, well, you know, while watching two children, well, I was really busy. I had that's why I had all the cereal. Right. Um, I had a lot of food I was making for me. Obviously, yeah. No, generally it was good though. It was a fun week with the kids, and then we had our you know the usual. Help, so that made a big difference, especially. So, it was really just a few, few hours a day where I had both of them full on. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, no, it it went really well. But I've, you know, I do bedtime a lot with them. I do food a lot with them. So it wasn't a huge shift. They they were definitely missing their mom after a couple of days. They were like, "Hey, you're great, but um, <laughs> where's mom?" Yeah. Toddler especially was like, hey, dad, I don't like what you're telling me right now about bedtime or, you know, not eating. Cereal. Yeah, candy. Like the amount of candy that you're cutting me off at. Um, I don't care for that. Where's mom? I'd like to ask her about candy. <laughs> I'd like to ask her about not going to bed. <laughs> That's funny. Because she knows she can suck her mom. A good cuddle. That's true. Actually, she comes yeah, out of bed. That's, that's true. It's, you know, 10 o'clock at night, but mom's on the couch. Yeah. If she comes in there crying, telling mom that she wants to cuddle, she's going to get five to 10 minutes of cuddling for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. She mom won't will do that never forever. Send, mom will never send her back to her room right no. away. No. Dad's much more the person who like sees the camera move and walks to the hallway and is like, back to bed. Back a to snuggle bed. wins me over every time. Yeah. 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 I don't know what that says about me, but. Uh, you just, you know, you're starved for affection. You think? <laughs> Yeah, you're you're partnered with me, so that's probably just true. Yeah, but, I don't think that's true at all. Yeah, has Greg been reading this Gre- week? Greg, Greg has been reading. He's he's got some articles. We've been a little thin on Greg's reads of the week, so uh, hopefully he's he's got some knowledge to drop oh, on oh, us. Oh, he's been reading. Oh, okay, read it up. Yeah, this is so. Greg's reads of the week. He sends us articles um, that you know he reads and thinks are relevant to us. And we rate those articles one to five, how much anxiety the titles give us. This is hilarious. Perfect. Study says venting about your problems isn't actually the best way to reduce anger. Here's what to do instead. Would you believe my therapist also sent me that article? Wait, really? For real. That's funny. She must also read Apple News. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, seriously? 100%. Uh, it gives me no anxiety. It did give me a really good giggle. Yeah, like a one out of five. Yeah, very, very little. It makes sense to me that that... Especially since I think she beat him to the punch. Yeah, that... Yeah, honestly, I feel like I do pretty well with that. Yeah. You're not a, like... You have anger, but it's not... You're not a big vented out, explode kind of gal. No, I... Right, I I experience anger in the capacity that like all human beings experience anger, Mm -hmm. but I don't really process through anger. No, no, that's not how you work through things. No, that's nice. I tend to stay pretty calm. Well, I mean, I'm I I have my own stuff. Yeah, 
Anger is no. my most readily available emotion. So sometimes it's like you're sad, but I'm going to run it through anger first, see how that <laughs> Just feels. Just see if it feels better. <laughs> it's That's not constructive. So true. Yeah, it's not good. All right. Five money moves that will make you rich, according to a survey of 10,000 millionaires. I guess a three out of five. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. Money moves, being rich. It just, it seems like a it, lot. It didn't really, one out of five. Make more, spend less, or those two of them? Yeah, I can read them to you because okay. they're just like, they have them in headlines. So make a plan, spend less, look for deals, make a budget, stay in control of your money. All right. Yep. Those are all good. I mean, they have, it's sure. not like that's all it says. They have paragraphs underneath that go into further yeah. detail. Yeah. But the thing is, like, I actually had a really wonderful conversation with someone, a woman at the airport in LA when I was on my way out. And she was talking about how she was 25 and she did not have access to financial education and financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And so she's had to teach herself a lot of things. And she was talking about books that she's read. And it was really cool for me to get to have a conversation and listen from her perspective because I give Gregory a tough time because he sends us so many articles like this. But there are so many people that don't have access to this information. And while it may seem um, repetitive to us just because we have heard it, it's out there because so few people have others talking to them about it. And so I do think it's valuable. Yeah. Yeah. And even the stuff that seems intuitive, I think, I, but it's good to have it really laid out and thought about step by step. And right. So I can understand it, but. All right. Next article, five issues with their parents that Gen Z brings up most in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, we're millennials for one, but uh, I guess a two out of five, that doesn't give me a ton of a, uh, Ton of anxiety, but to lay a couple on us. Okay. Just out of curiosity. Uh, Any number, anxiety for you? No, no anxiety for me. Okay. Made me giggle. All of these, like, I was like, yeah. Greg's really doing it this week. I like the articles he's sending. Uh, pushback over screen time. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely Gen Z, like a younger generation. Inability to problem solve without a parent's help. Huh. Different perspectives on higher education. Language around food and body image. Oh, okay. That's big. That checks out. That one, I think, is one of the first that's really resonated like for our generation as well. A lack of understanding about their gender and sexual identities. Yeah. Yeah, the, the last two you listed were definitely ones that follow much more for our generation as well as Z. Screen time for us was, we barely had screens. I feel like differing perspectives on higher education was applicable too. I feel like it's applicable now, though. I feel like it was applicable. Well, you're right. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like we kind of both wanted to go to school, sure. so we didn't have a... Yeah. I think I just think we were on the, like, the tail end of where education and a lot of stuff really got very complicated and difficult yeah, and expensive. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I think the way that they talk about food and body image, that's, yeah. that's huge. I think that's something that we really face with both of our parents and mm-hmm. not even from a, um, I don't even think that it is in the way, like when you think of like an almond mom, sure. I don't think that it's even necessarily in that way. I think generationally just the way that they talked about food and the way that they were raised around food is very negative. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very adversarial relationship. Yeah. And, and it, I, I know for us, a lot of it wasn't directed at us. Not so at much, all. Yeah. I uh, agree. It, you just take a lot of it in when you see it. Hundred percent. Even when it's like when you see your parents talk certain ways about themselves or other people, um, you internalize it. And so, I don't have the best relationship with food for sure, but so be it. Working on it. Yeah, and the gender identities and sexualities interesting to me because I don't really understand the difficulty with it. What do you mean? I I don't have that with. My parents, you would think that because we're a little bit older and it's talking about Gen Z, that our parents would be even more uh, rigid or ro- yeah, less... like rooted in it. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like both of our families are fairly. Yeah. Yeah. My we're par- also not very like exciting on the gender. and No, not at all. But I do feel like we welcome 
all kinds of people into our lives and talk about people who have all different perspectives and identities and experiences. And I don't feel like that's ever been flagged or questioned with our parents. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like that's a privilege. Definitely. Definitely is. That's not a universal experience. Right. But our personal identities are pretty boring. Pretty boring. Yeah. Yeah. Very, uh, cookie for sure. Cutter. Straight, white, unexciting. Yeah. College educated. Yeah. Ew. Yep. <laughs> Boo. No, not really. Um, all great things. All great things. Should we hit some voicemails? I know we have emails, so. Voicemails wanna... of the week. Voicemails of the week. <laughs> oh, thanks, babe. You never finish my things. Yeah. I appreciate that. Voicemail number one. Voicemail number one. Hi, Joe Matt. My name's Paige. I'm originally from Windsor, Ontario, the city that borders Detroit, Michigan. But I've moved to Sydney, Australia, I don't know, like two years ago. Um, my question is kind of weird. Um, but I watch your OOTDs on like Instagram and TikTok. And I always see you guys wearing shoes in them. I know it's a big thing for Americans and Australians to wear shoes in their house. However, for us Canadians, it's a big no-no to wear shoes in the house. Don't know why. It's just a thing. Um, so one of my Australian friends come over to our house. They're like weirded out that they have to take off their shoes. Anyways, I was just wondering what your opinions are about wearing shoes inside the house. Because, like, I know in the winter time, you have to take them off because of snow, and you don't want to trick snow and mud throughout your house. But, anyways, 